Watching the world burn, watching the world burn, October 28th, 2024. Let's get into it. So, I don't know if you knew, but for, for many years I worked for the federal government. Obviously, I've served in three branches of the military, the United States Marine Corps. If you watched my last video, I actually uh, enjoyed Donald Trump's depiction of the Kamala Harris military versus the uh, Trump military. Because <laughs> I will tell you in the depiction of Full Metal Jacket, if you ever want to go back and watch that movie, probably the closest uh, movie ever made of what I went through in Marine Corps basic training back in the 1980s. Now, I'm not sure that the woke military uh, has the same uh, experience, but uh, let's get into I wanted to make a quick video because I've got great hope. I mean, I watched Donald Trump's, I almost watched the entire thing. I was doing laundry, you know, and when you're doing laundry, you just have the TV on. And I watched the entire Trump uh, Madison Garden uh, rally. Insanity. Doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result. Would you have done something differently than President Biden during the past four years? Uh, there is not a thing that comes to mind. Kamala wouldn't change a thing. Their weakness invited wars, welfare for illegals, while Americans struggle. Now Kamala wants higher taxes on top of higher prices. We can't afford four more years of Kamala. I'm Donald J. Trump, and I approve this message. Uh, and I tell you what, man, he just keeps getting better and better, doesn't he? <laughs> I loved it. But, you know, let's, let's just talk about... The Democrats, the, the evil Democrat Party for just a moment. So here's Vernon Jones, and I thought this was a great post by, by him. He says, fact check me if you are a Democrat. I, I don't think any Democrat's going to ever fact check this. <laughs> but, but I loved it. I loved it because this is what I know of the Democrats. Uh, anyway, let's just say, uh, yes, the governor of Michigan used to work for George Soros. If you're not familiar with George Soros, he's a evil billionaire. Uh, basically, I think he looks like Palatine of Star Wars. Uh, he's the evil emperor of the world. Uh, he has funded more chaos. I think the guy just, just he's probably in cahoots with Satan, and uh, he wants the world to end. So, you know, that's George Soros. The Biden-Harris administration just admitted they released thousands of illegal immigrants convicted of violent crimes. Kamala lied. An undocumented immigrant is not a criminal. They released murderers. An undocumented immigrant is not a criminal. Human traffickers. An undocumented immigrant is not a criminal. Rapists, all released under Kamala. President Trump warned us he'll deport these thugs, secure the border, and make our streets safe again. I'm Donald J. Trump, and I approve this message. Just my opinion. Yes, California Governor Gavin Newsom is Nancy Pelosi's nephew. Now, maybe you didn't know that. Maybe you didn't know that Gavin Newsom was Nancy Pelosi's nephew. And if you don't know anything about Nancy Pelosi, she's a freaking gazillionaire. I, what has she got, like $200 million? Because she does a lot of insider trading with all of her uh, warmongering uh, co-patriots there in the Lockheed Martin and Northrop Grumman and she funds uh, the war machine uh, and she's an evil pardon my French she's an evil bitch <laughs> yeah. oh my god but you know the Democrats in San Francisco keep voting for her. nothing says her vision like copy and paste from the boss Bidenomics is working Bidenomics is working and we have a process in place to manage migrants at the border we're working to make sure it's safe and orderly and humane our administration is simultaneously working to ensure a safe, orderly, and humane processing system at the border. We'll not conduct a hasty rush to the exit. We'll do it, we'll do it responsibly, deliberately, and safely. On the issue of Afghanistan. And to that end, we have seen a successful drawdown of the embassy. What is your message to Hezbollah and its backer, Iran? Don't. And what's the message to Iran? Don't. As President Biden said, just don't. Exactly. One word. Pretty straightforward. Doesn't make sense to me. Somebody please someday explain all this to me. You know, I, I just kind of go along with all this. 
Yes, Adam Schiff's sister is married to one of George Soros's sons. Isn't it amazing how these these evil bastages uh, just are all in, intertwined in this circle of evil? Uh, you know, I think it's a satanic uh, cult that exists within our government. Uh, and everybody says, oh, no, it's not evil. The Democrats aren't evil. You know, oh, my God, that cybersecurity guy, you can't say that. Well, let's Kamala backed Biden on everything. She was the deciding vote for his disastrous economic agenda. They raised taxes on the middle class and prices soared. Kamala was in charge of his open border policies, giving welfare to illegals while Americans struggle and their weakness invited wars. Now Kamala wants to double down on failure. It's time to turn the page on Joe and Kamala's failed agenda. President Trump fights for you. His strength kept us safe. Trump cut taxes for families. Prices were lower and the border secure. Now, President Trump can do it again. And we are going to launch a new golden age of American success for the citizens of every race, religion, color, and creed. Remember, Kamala broke it. President Trump will fix it. I'm Donald J. Trump, and I approve this message. Just keep going. I, I thought this was a great post. Yes, John Kerry's daughter is married to uh, Mullah's son. Hey, got it. Let's see. In Iran. So the Mullah's son in Iran is married to John Kerry's daughter. Oh, well, maybe you should fact check that. Now, do I know that for sure? I don't know. I'm just, I'm just reading along here, but I, I definitely believe that. We, we want to actually, we need to have things be what they should, which is that, that legal immigration of honest, hardworking, talented people is quick and easy, and coming into the country illegally is hard. That's how it should be. All right, so let's just keep going. Yes, Hillary Clinton's daughter, Chelsea, is married to George Soros' nephew. <laughs> Boy, does this sound like incest is best? Oh, my God. I mean, I'm just, I'm just reading along here. Uh, let's, let's keep going. This election, I think, is going to decide uh, the fate of America and the fate of Western civilization. And they try to kill the next president of the United States. Enough was enough. And I said, let's have a mania. Run wild, brother. Let's have a mania. If you try to kill our citizens, we will kill you. If you spill a drop of American blood, we will spill a gallon of yours. If you come back, we're going to kill you. We're going to give you the death penalty or kill you. The fact is, and I'll say it now, you have to get them the hell out. You have to get them out. We will make America great again. Yes, ABC News executive produce, producer Eon Cameron is married to Suzanne Rice, Obama's former national security advisor. Obama destroyed the United States. He's a Marxist freaking lunatic that got elected. Now, I, I'm going to tell you, I had great hope for Obama. Don't get me wrong. I mean, back then, I mean, he was a great orator. You know, he was like Hitler. You know, he... And by the way, let's call Trump Hitler. You know, we can call Trump Hitler or Obama Hitler. But I mean, I honestly thought that he was going to do good. And uh, it turned out he just wanted to destroy the United States uh, in, in every way fashionable. Yeah, Harris, this, this is a stunning ruling by a federal judge who is 
ordering Virginia to reinstate individuals who have self-identified as non-citizens back on the voter rolls. And what's even more astounding is the, the vast majority of these folks had presented immigration documents confirming that they were non-citizens, and they re we recently had that verified by federal authorities. So here we are with a judge saying, put people back on the voter rolls who you know are non-citizens. And this is under a law in Virginia that's been in effect since 2006. It has it's been applied by Republican and Democrat governors alike into this 90-day period. And here we are 11 days before a presidential election and a federal judge is ordering them back on the voter rolls. It's astounding to me that this could possibly happen. I mean, listen, common sense says non-citizens aren't on the voter rolls, but the Constitution and the law say it as well. And that's why we are immediately petitioning the Fourth Circuit for an emergency stay here on this injunction. Mm -hmm. uh, and we will immediately go to the U.S. Supreme Court if necessary. Look, I... Yes, CBS President David Rhodes is the brother of Ben Rhodes, Obama's Deputy National Security Advisor for Strategic Communications. Oh, what do you know? <laughs> now, I, I haven't verified all these facts, but I'm just reading you this post because I thought this is the greatest thing ever. And he says, he says, fact check this. So please fact check this. All right. If you, if you think that these are wrong, leave a comment below. Uh, yes. <laughs> When I first came into office, I cut taxes more than any other president. We have created 7 million new jobs, and it led to a growth like we've never seen before. We developed the greatest economy in history by far. When I left office, it changed. Inflation destroyed the lives of so many people. Interest rates went from 2% to 10%. Millions of illegal immigrants, traffickers, and drugs coming into our country. Our country has gone to hell. So I made a decision to run. We're going to make America great again, greater than ever before. I will fight for you with every breath and I will never let you down. President Trump is literally putting his life on the line and he's willing to risk it all because he loves this country. He is strong, he is fearless, and he is what this country needs right now. Our cities will be safe, our streets will be clean, and our border will be secure. We can't allow our country to be destroyed by politicians who will put their own power ahead of the interests of the American people, our freedom, and our future. The left told me to hate Trump. When you cut through the lies, you realize the truth. American families were better when Donald Trump was president. We were safer, wealthier, and stronger. So if you love this country, if you want to stand up and fight for the future of our nation, you must re-elect Donald J. Trump. I'm Donald J. Trump, and I approve this message. ABC News correspondent Claire Shipman is married to J. Carney, former Obama White House press secretary. Boy, this sounds like incest is best, doesn't it? All these inner circles all moving together. Uh, the Democrats, oh my God. You know, what the hell is Trump up against? Uh, let's see. The rebels are Republicans now. They're like, you want to yeah, be a rebel? You want to be punk you're... rock? You want to like yeah. buck the system? You're yeah. a conservative now. That's the, that's how crazy. And then the liberals are now pro pro silencing criticism they're they're pro censorship online they're they're talking they about regulating them. free speech and that regulating the first amendment it's bananas to watch Joe, they come after their political opponent well they i do. got more guys i always say you know i kid but i'm not kidding i've been investigated more than alphonse capone he was the meanest of them all he'd kill you in two seconds if he didn't like you right i've been under investigation more than Alphonse Capone, only because it's political opponent stuff. And I've won. I won the big case in Florida. I, I'm winning the other stuff. 
you win. But you know what they did? They did something that's only done in third world countries. They came after their political opponent. Yes. I could have put crooked Hillary in jail. Well, not only that, but they're now weaponizing it by saying that that's what you're going to do once oh, yeah, you get yeah. in office. Isn't it great? By ignoring he what they're doing right now. It's crazy. I heard it. Somebody was defending me today. They said, no, that's, they say, that's what you're doing to him. They're going, he's going to put us in jail. He's going to invest. They that's said, what you're that's doing. That's what you're doing to him. Yeah. A lot of people say, will you do that? Will you do that to him, if, you, if to them, if you win? You know, it's the presidency has tremendous power. I could have put crooked Hillary I in respected jail. that you didn't because didn't. what you said was it would be bad for the country. Yes, the ABC News and Univision reporter Mac, Matthew Jaff, Jaffe, J-E-F-F-E, is married to Kate, Katie Hogan, Obama's former deputy press secretary. <laughs> Boy, you want to talk about some, uh, uh, you know, what do they call it? Uh, cl uh, 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 anyway, whenever you hire a relative or somebody that you know, they, they all come in. Uh, I, God damn, I can't think of the word. Yes, CNN VP Virginia Mas Masalei, M-O-S-E-L-E-Y, is married to Tom Nidus, former Hillary Clinton's deputy secretary. Oh, my God. <laughs> this is cronyism. That was the word I was looking for. Cronyism to the max. You wonder how these people get promoted? Do you think that Kamala Harris got where she is without cronyism? Oh, my God. Now, we, we do have a fundamental issue, which is that, that the, the government is spending far, much that, far, far more than it brings in. Um, and the reality is that all, all government spending is actually taxation. All government spending is taxation. Sometimes people think some of it is taxation and some of it's not, but it's all taxation because the part that is not covered by, by tax revenue becomes inflation. So you're either taxed directly or you're taxed by inflation, but you're for, but you're for, for, for sure taxed. <laughs> and, 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 and so all government spending is taxation. So we have to reduce government spending overall. It, it, like this, this will be forced upon us in the future um, because already uh, just the interest payments on the debt are 23% of all t uh, federal tax revenue, just the interest payments. The interest payments now exceed the Defense Department budget, which is a trillion dollars a year. That's a lot of money. So just the interest on the debt is, exceeds what we spend on the military just the interest, and that is rising rapidly. So, so it, it can't be like, you know, we'll, we'll trim a little bit here and there. If that's not gonna work, there, ha there have to be quite radical reductions in cost. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I think we just need to be, you know, it, um, if, you know, please Lord, Trump wins, uh, the, you know, and, and, and the Department of Government Efficiency happens, we, we want, we're, we're going to be very open and transparent and be very clear about this is what we're doing, here are the issues, Th this is, this is the, the math for what the, what's being spent and, and what, you know, and, and we're going to make it, we're going to make the spending lower and if, if somebody's got a better idea for how to make the spending lower, we're, tell us, but, but if we don't, we're going to bankrupt the country. And, and so we got to do something. And, and it's got to be a, like some pretty big moves. Drain the swamp. <laughs> yeah. I'd say like drain, drain the swamps. This is like a, there's so many swamps. It, it, it's like, you know, there's, there's so many swamps. There's, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's just nutty that like there was a massive increase in IRS personnel and, and, and it, instead of adding people to the border patrol, like, this is totally backwards. It's, it's like, well, like, you can continue to remain, remain a federal employee, but you have to go guard the border. That's your new job. <laughs> you know? Um, it, it, it's, it's, it's like, why are, we, why are we spending money and applying resources to oppress the, the American people uh, while rolling out a red carpet for illegals? It doesn't make any sense. So. So yeah, it, it would have to be pretty big. I mean, there's, I actually have tried Googling it and I've asked all the AIs, how, how, many, how many government agencies are there? And even the government doesn't know. <laughs> okay, and the AIs don't know. 
Like you, you, they're like, well, it's about 450, but maybe it's 420. I'm like, oh, 420, no kidding. Uh, that's, that's a lot of agencies, uh, just at the federal level. I mean, like, if you sort of stand back and say, okay, just for a second, like, let's say we're starting the country again. How many agencies do we need? <laughs> do we need more than 99? Because that's 99 is a lot of agencies. You know, like, that's, that's still a lot, you know? If you said, like, does any, how many people even know at 99 agencies? <laughs> I'd say most, I'd say practically no one knows 99, knows the names of 99 agencies, let alone the 420 or whatever there are. <laughs> yeah, so we, we, we have to unwind the situation. Um, and, uh, and, and I think, we're, well, I think we're gonna do it and it's gonna unleash a, a new era of prosperity uh, because people don't, don't even realize how much they're getting held back by uh, millions of federal regulations. Millions, literally. So. And if it turns out that, that, that we accidentally got rid of a good regulation, we'll just put it back. <laughs> Is that easy? This is what you call a stack deck if you had a hunch the news media was somewhat rigged and you couldn't put your finger on it, this might help you solve the puzzle. Game in town, it's BRICS. The big meeting in Russia's Kazan, it's really gone off a treat. We've got over uh, 20 leaders from 30 countries and they've all got together in isolated Russia. Uh, how remarkable. Run the video on you. Putin is now isolated from the world more than he has ever been. Russia has never been so isolated. We have never been more united. We can isolate them. We can isolate them in the United Nations. We can isolate them in UN specialized agencies. It will also throw Russia back into isolation. Well, BRICS was the only game in town this week, and it was the hot ticket. Uh, there was nobody there from the West, funnily enough, uh, as everybody decided on big new energy deals, pipelines, roads, shipping routes up through the North. The Americans and the British were kind of sat at home, uh, looking out the window, peeking through the blinds uh, at those nasty neighbors over in the East and in the Global South. Now, they've never really liked BRICS, have they, Augie? They never did. Yeah, they've always had it in for them. So we're going to do a bit of old headline ping pong, one of our favorites here at the Moscow. Mules. Oh, he's going to start with a few uh, little very incisive and informed views from the West when the BRICS uh, gig kicked off. What have you got there, Augie? So, back from 2011, Council on Foreign Relations writes, don't bet on the BRICS. And uh, the New York Times, an, ar uh, an artificial block built on catchphrases, 2012. <laughs> from 2013, Wall Street Journal, BRICS fade as engine of growth. And the World Economic Forum in 2014. Uh, is BRICS having a midlife crisis? <laughs> I don't think so, baby. <laughs> and of course, there's Guardian uh, from 2016 now saying, has the BRICS bubble burst? Oh, yeah, yeah, it burst and exploded all over your face. Because uh, in reality, what BRICS is doing now, it's giving people a new way of doing business, a fairer, more equitable way to do things. The age of divide and conquer is coming to an end, and uh, unite and prosper is upon us. And the numbers also tell us that story, correct, Dougie? Well, right now, numbers show that BRICS countries provide almost 37% of the world GDP, while, you know, the G7 countries, the Westoids, uh, are at minimal uh, 29%. Is that the G for genocide, 7? <laughs> 
<laughs> yes, exactly, the genocide seven. And uh, here comes the IMF prognosis, which says that BRICS countries are gonna be the motor of the growth in the future, with uh, India getting plus 7%, China going plus 4.8%, and Russia going at 3.6%, while the genocide seven is struggling at one slash two percent while Germany is at zeros or even negatives. And, of course, uh, lots of people in the West hoping that a few uh, uh, fisticuffs might break out in these little bilateral meetings that took place on the sidelines. Uh, you had Modi and Xi getting on very well. And let's not forget that Modi and Xi have some difficulties, uh, particularly with uh, border disputes up in the Himalayas. Now, it's interesting how the boys have so far dealt with these when their two militaries met up in the mountain passes. There was a kind of gentleman's agreement, and the gentleman's agreement was no firearms or knives or pointed weapons. All you could do was wait in there with the old fists and an old shtick, as we say in Ireland. Let's check it out on the video, Augie. So this is basically Chinese and Indian soldiers Getting it on medieval style. Look, no guns allowed, so you can throw stones and you can um, use sticks and... Uh, so it's basically sticks and stones will, will break your bones. And I was just asking, Augie, why can't we do... Why can't we sort out all our military uh, conflicts with your sticks and stones? I wonder how the Israelis would be getting on out in the Middle East right now if they can only fight with sticks and stones and all those hundreds of millions of Arabs around them uh, could do the same. How would the Israelis be getting on, do you think, Augie? Well, the question is, Che, how much Raytheon will charge for a stick? Oh, nice. And of course, it wasn't just big world leaders that turned up. Antonio Guterres, the UN chief, uh, he turned up as well, and he got a traditional uh, Slavic welcome. Uh, he also ended up, uh, you know, stirring up the ire, the anger of the Ukro Nazis. And poor old Antonio ended up on the Mirtovorets uh, kill list. <laughs> along with my good self. Welcome to the club, Antonio. Welcome to the club. And as India and China sat down together and seemed to really warm and really get some business done, solving the problems, getting their heads together, doing what real statesmen and leaders should be doing, uh, the Iranians were also in town. There's rumors that they've just uh, signed a deal to license the building of Russian fighter jets out there in the Middle East. Watch out, Tel Aviv. Uh, and somebody back in the old days, uh, very, very sure, Sharp, uh, sharp as attack. I can't think of his name. What's his name? Just, he used to be present. Kind of fell over a lot. <sighs> Old Joe. Sleepy Joe. Sleepy Joe had a thing or two to say about, uh, you know, Russia, India, and China, and Iran. Basically, uh, a prophecy to make about how uh, this uh, alliance would potentially go. Back in 1997, on the video, Augie. Connected with the loss of empire, wounded pride, and most importantly, un uncertainty about Russia's place in the world of the 21st uh -huh. century. And were you in their spot, you would be the same in my view, and yeah. I would. Where do they go? I had one interesting comment, our conversation was Zaganov, which was repeated with Levin. They talked about they don't want this NATO expansion. It's weird listening to him actually speak in a normal accent, said, Well, and it? if you do that, we may have to look to China. And I couldn't help using the colloquial expression from my state by saying to Zaganov, lots of luck in your senior year. Lots um, of luck in your know, senior uh, year. Good mm -hmm. luck. And if, not, if that doesn't work, try Iran. Yeah, and they have, and they will, and they're gonna. And that's the way it's rolling, boys. It's the dawn of a new age. Not so funny anymore, eh? And of course, staying in the U.S., uh, while uh, the real, uh, the big boys, uh, the statesmen, sit down and solve their problems here in Russia, out in Kazan, uh, in the States, uh, show rolls on. Nobody seems to want to talk about policy. And meanwhile, uh, the debt, the national debt in the U.S. is way, way over 30, uh, 33, 34, 35 trillion dollars. I'm not sure exactly. Augie, it's even gone up in the last uh, number of days, right? Right, it jumped 500 billion dollars in just three weeks. So by the time this show airs, might be completely different. Right? Yeah, and even people like uh, Big Elon, he's saying that the USA could go bankrupt. I'm pulling down the shutters, mama. I ain't got no buns to sell. Uh, and, you know, what is the real uh, reality here? Uh, what is it all about? It doesn't seem to be about anything uh, other than the cult of personality, and it's quite a vacuous cult at that. Augie? Never let anyone take your joy from you. <laughs> oh. I call myself a joyful warrior. Oh. Right? Never let anyone take your joy from oh. you. Big joint. Should never again stand behind the seal of the President of the United States. 
what the f is that? I mean, she is just uber retarded. She, there's nothing going around in there. It's like, if she moves her head to the south, it sounds like a marble rattling around in a can. Me. And it really makes you wonder. Uh, Kamala has had a ton of cash flushed into her campaign. As soon as they decided that Joe uh, Sharp has attacked Biden, uh, wasn't the man for the, the run for the White House, uh, they released uh, the hounds, they released the money. Uh, Mr. Biden uh, uh, lay down, got out of the way, and the money started to flow in. Bill Gates even gave her $50 million uh, to make sure she gets it over the line. But it doesn't look like she's getting anything over the line because she can't even employ a decent speed speechwriter, okay? Listen to this stuff, right? She keeps saying the same stuff at every rally as if nobody's watching. Newsflash, Kamala, uh, there's a thing called the internet and recording videos. We know you're a complete bimbo. Run the video, Oggy. <laughs> what the f It's exactly the same. Oh, man, this is just mind-numbingly drivelish, isn't it? I mean, come on, you got to have something to say. Maybe you get this sense as well, like Augie and I do here in the Center of Disinformationology. If you listen closely enough, you can kind of hear in the background uh, the creak of metal and the snap of little nuts and bolts. The wheels are just starting to come off Kamala's uh, campaign. All right, that's it. And uh, peace out. Stay free and watch all the video from this point forward. Good morning, everyone. District Attorney Heather Adams. On Tuesday afternoon, I was contacted by Krista Miller, who is our Chief Clerk of Elections, regarding potentially fraudulent voter registration applications that had recently been received by her office. At that time, she informed me that the Elections Office received approximately 2,500 applications at or near the deadline for registering to vote. While preparing to process these applications, staff noticed that numerous applications appeared to have the same handwriting, were filled out on the same day with unknown signatures, and some were previously registered voters, <coughs> excuse me, and the signatures on file did not, not match the signatures on the application. So before I begin to summarize our preliminary findings, I must remind everyone that this is an ongoing investigation, and for that reason, I will be limited in the details that I can provide. Lancaster County detectives uh, began investigating the voter registration applications and immediately found applications that were indeed fraudulent. Indicators of fraud included inaccuracies with the addresses listed on the applications, false personal identification information, as well as false names. A number of the applications also contained names that did not match the provided Social Security information. In some cases, applications contained correct personal identification information, such as the correct address, correct phone number, date of birth, driver's license number, and Social Security number. But the individuals listed on the applications informed detectives that they did not request the form, they did not complete the form, and verified that the signature on the form was not theirs. At this point, it is believed that the fraudulent voter registrations are connected to a large-scale canvassing operations for voter registrations that date back to June. However, the majority of the applications received are dated August 15th and after. Those canvassing for voter registrations were employed and paid to obtain voter registration applications. The majority of the applications were from residents in the city of Lancaster. However, applications were also received from residents in Columbia, Elizabethtown, Mountjoy, Akron, Ephrata, Stevens, Strasburg, as well as other locations across Lancaster County. The canvases themselves took place at various shopping centers parking lots of grocery stores and businesses, sidewalks, and parks. During this preliminary investigation, detectives were able to uh, verify some of the applications were indeed legitimate. In these instances, the, application, the applicant verified that they did provide information to a canvasser. For these applications, we will immediately advise vo voter registration uh, and that we confirm that they are legitimate requests and voter registration will process that application. 
Thus far of the investigations that we have completed, we have determined that 60% uh, have been fraudulent. That is of the investigations that we've completed. Uh, we do have more uh, to do today, um, and my understanding is that voter registration is still going through uh, the box of 2,500, but should be completed sometime here today. As I said, the investigation is ongoing. Uh, we are aware of at least two other counties that receive similar applications that are currently being investigated. At this point, we have confirmed violation of our crimes code as well as our uh, elections code. We have all available detectives working on this. Uh, we are all hands on deck so that we can properly assess the validity of these applications in a timely manner. If needed, we will request additional assistance from our local police departments.